Recently, I got a new laptop which is the MacBook Air M1 and I already did some unboxing including my first impression review and as I use it on my daily life, things are getting interesting and I figure out I have to make an in-depth review about this powerful laptop. This is the base model which is currently on 999 US dollars but I got mine for only 890. Obviously, this is on par with other laptop on this price point and to give you a heads up, this is one of the best that you can get and I'm gonna tell you why on this MacBook Air M1 review. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe, it would really help me a lot. Let's start with physical appearance. This has a metal build, both surface and base, but it's lightweight. It lives up to its name MacBook Air, literally. You can freely carry this with one hand. The hinge is sturdy, you don't have to worry over using it. This only has few ports which is two USB-C that supports Thunderbolt 3 and one 3.5mm headphone jack which I would never use because this already has a good wireless connection of Bluetooth 5 for AirPods or other earbuds and Wi-Fi 6 which pretty much works well. It also has a built-in retina display with default resolution of 1440 by 900 This is just on initial settings only and a retina display works different than other displays. I'm not gonna get into that but this can scale up to 2560 by 1600 which is the highest in the resolution that it's marketed with and most users are using. This supports one external monitor as well but it's still best to use it on its own display because it has a better color accuracy with color model of P3 white color which is a huge upgrade for me coming from my HTOP 15 gaming laptop in terms of color standards. This also has 400 nits of brightness and it's really good for outdoors. The built-in Magic Keyboard is satisfying to use and trackpad works well. Actually, this is one of my favorite things on this laptop. It's accurate and fluidly glides all over the place and has a lot of gestures. If you prefer to still use a mouse, there's some minor problem. You need to adjust a specific settings every time you switch from trackpad to mouse and vice versa because of the scroll wheel that works inverted. So this heavily depends if you use your scroll wheel all the time. It's kind of annoying to adjust every time but just a minor problem and it's not a big deal if you eventually adapted to it. The most surprising thing about this MacBook Air M1 is the speakers. It has two up-facing speakers with wide stereo sound. Personally, I think this is insane. Again, I'm coming from a Windows laptop and this is a huge upgrade for me in terms of sound quality. Because if we're gonna compare the percentage of how I'm satisfied with the loudness of the speakers, I would say 60% on my a 15 and this MacBook Air M1 is on 140%. You get the point. As for the two built-in parts of this MacBook Air M1, let's test it. So for the 3 mic array with directional beam forming, this is how it sounds. And the 720p webcam, this is how it looks. I think this is decent enough for video calls, meetings, or conferences. And we don't have any correct lighting right now, so it looks rainy. So about the performance of this MacBook Air M1, again, this is the base model. With M1 Apple Silicon chip, which is considered to be one of the biggest leaps in tech industry. The jump of Apple from Intel processors to their own system on chips. This model as well as the most popular one with 8 gigs of unified memory and 256 gigs of storage. We're gonna talk specifically about the storage in a bit, but as for my benchmark on this M1 chip, this has a score of 2374 on single core and 8779 on multi-core which is better than my H stuff 15 in terms of processor with Intel Core i5 11400H that only has 1857 on single core and 6150 on multi core. So for my example on simple multitasking, when I'm editing sometimes, the Final Cut Pro is on external monitor with some finder window. Maybe one or two opened and this MacBook Air M1 is on the right side and most of the time this has Apple Notes, Notion, Google Chrome, and Safari open. The only highest swap memory that I've seen on Activity Monitor while multitasking and heavy editing on Final Cut Pro was around 2 gig. So let's jump into that. I'll show my exact settings and performance on real life editing using Final Cut Pro. The last video that I edited on this MacBook Air M1 base model with Final Cut Pro and uploaded on this channel was my video of MacBook Air M1 unboxing and review for 2024. The quality of my raw footage is Apple ProRes HQ 4K 30fps. So for my project editing settings, it's on 4K 30fps and I'm rendering it as Apple ProRes LT and with standard Rec 709 color space. I exported it into 4K 30fps with video codec of H.264 multi-pass better. So for the total render time for that 8 minute video, which was already done editing and compiled already with lots of effects like color grading, blurs, and so on, it took me 3 minutes and 30 seconds. Even without rendering, it plays smooth and I don't even need to change it to performance on playback quality. This is really good and it doesn't make any sense to me that this laptop with only 8GB of RAM or let's call it unified memory performs smooth and fast like that. 
and for the exporting time this eight minute video took me 11 minutes and two seconds and that is really good and it's 4k already which is different from my past workflow of 45 minutes on adobe premiere pro for a 10 minute video with 4k quality that is downscaled to 1080p that's two different things but you still get the point i'm gonna create a dedicated video editing test for this macbook air and if you're waiting for that make sure to subscribe turn on notifications so you'll be updated on that about the thermals there's not much to worry about unlike other laptops that heat is noticeable even on idle mode on the middle part on this macbook air m1 it doesn't even heat up that much on 4k video editing and it just gets warm feels just natural but in the future i would try to push this further on performance to really test the temperatures again what i have here is the base model which has 256 gigs of storage for most users i would say this is enough unless you're doing something on a professional level that needs an insane amount of data but essentially what i'm trying to say here is in terms of upgrading storage i wouldn't recommend it because unlike windows laptop that you're free to upgrade your laptop anytime this doesn't allow that which means the parts are stuck inside and you can't upgrade this on your own and this model has the base specs on other parts which is good enough as it is and that's one of the main reasons why it's one of the most popular laptops models out there macbook air itself with m1 apple silicon chip 8 gigs of unified memory and 256 gigs of storage specifically that this laptop lasts around 8 to 16 hours of battery life or more huge upgrade for me and this just covers everything that i need to do from my daily workflow studying up to video editing and entertainment just imagine two to four hours of battery life on gaming laptop versus this of course you need to sacrifice dedicated gaming but this can still play some games on battery mode without any decreased performance lastly touch id is one of the best features on this laptop this makes it as a really good tech companion because of its security function once you've input your password all you need to do is access it with touch id until the battery runs out or shut down there are a few keynotes that i want to add on this review there's a lot to learn if you're coming from a windows laptop just like me especially the command key functions and the settings itself of mac os it's insanely confusing and if you're installing apps softwares or even connecting some external drives there's a lot of things that you need to adjust and allow which on windows laptop those settings are easy to find and apply but on mac os it's so hard and you might spend hours looking for it and probably cost you a headache or worse it might even traumatize you just like what happened to me one thing as well that I want to talk about is how this laptop became a core part of my Apple ecosystem. I've been using Apple Notes a lot and this quite replaced Notion already on some situations as it's really convenient. I can access everything from this MacBook Air M1 and continue workflow on my iPad and iPhone. I also don't need cable sometimes when transferring files thanks to AirDrop feature that lets you wirelessly transfer things at a high speed rate across your Apple devices. It's not new, it's been there and I just want to say it because it's really convenient and it just saves a lot of time. I can also use my iPad as extended, separate, or mirror display of my MacBook Air. Really good tool for multitasking, especially that this MacBook Air M1 only supports one external monitor. There's a lot of things that needs to talk about when it comes to Apple ecosystem, so that's gonna be for another video. Make sure to subscribe, that's gonna be a good one. The negative thing for me about this MacBook Air M1 or just the MacBook or the Mac OS itself is compatibility. This is already given and it's quite hard to adjust because you can't do anything about it. For some softwares and apps, there might be a way. Example, for games, they have the Apple Gaming Toolkit which lets you run Windows-based games on Mac OS. Unfortunately for me, there are some specific apps or softwares that I use which is really important on my workflow. My muscle memory is one with those apps already and I can do a lot of creative things with it. But right now, I'm back to zero. I have to find a replacement that is similar to those that I use. Some people might think it's just nothing, but I'm serious. It's hard completely adjusting from Windows to Mac OS. So for my MacBook Air M1 review, that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching this. If you did, please like this video and don't forget to subscribe. It would really help me a lot. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to comment down below. Again, Hermes here. Thanks for watching and see you guys on the next one.